What it is. So, welcome back to a new reading vlog. Today is Monday the 14th, uh, December 14th. Uh, it's about 9 a.m. now. I am uh, working right now. I have um, some work stuff up here and then I am kind of going through my Notion page for the week and getting stuff um, set up. And then I have my books for the week. So, over the weekend, You'll see in my last reading vlog that I finished to have a match. I really love that. It was, I give it a five stars. Um, and I'll have a review coming up for that this week. I'm going to work on that today. And I'm also reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which I had started last week. Um, I'm about 40% of the way through on this one. Um, so hopefully I'll be finishing that this week. And then I also finished, or not finished, but started um, Among the Beasts and Briars. This was... Um, November's Alcrate book um, and the cover is gorgeous. I have um, my uh, Alcrate unboxing. I'll tag that up above. Um, but yeah, I started this. I'm not very far into it. Um, I think I'm only about um, let's see, 15, 16 pages in. Yeah, I'm only on page 16 so I'm not very far in. But so far it's really good. Um, it's definitely different than what I was expecting. I think because of the name I thought that it was like a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but I'm starting to think that maybe it's not. Um, but yeah, these sprayed edges, like I said, this is the All Crate Edition. It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, and I'm really excited to be reading that. And, uh, yeah. Um, I think that's about all I have going on this week. I'm also reading, um, well, I started The Devil in the White City. Um, I'm not very far into it. I think I'm like 10 pages into it, so not much. Um, but I'm going to focus on that this week too, and then I'm also going to take a look later on at my arcs and see what arcs I need to get read on NetGalley, so I'll show you guys when I do that. Um, and then yeah, I hope you guys have a great week, welcome to a new week, and I will see you guys um, when I have an update. Hey guys, so I thought that I would do an update on my reading, I don't think I've updated since Monday probably, um, so I'm still reading Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley. Um, Poston. So I am about 80 pages in right now uh, and I'm really liking it so far. Um, it's not much, you know, to have really formulated too much of an opinion yet, but I am liking what I've read so far. Uh, so Among the Beasts and Briars is about a girl named um, Ceres, I think her name is, is how you pronounce it, um, and she lives in a kingdom where there is no, um, like, no famine, no war, no disease. Um, the kingdom has just been very um, like plentiful and blessed and um, the reason for that is because um, like thousands of years before um, the king made a um, like a deal or a pact with the uh, like magical queen from another kingdom um, and that queen um, like imbued his crown with magic and now that crown is um, like passed down from from um, like king to king um, throughout the generations and the magic within the crown is what keeps the land um, this the land within this particular town um, kind of safe from all of those things and so in the outside world those things still happen but within um, this kingdom um, I think it's called Alaria um, there's no none of those things like can touch it and so surrounding this town is this like forbidden um, like magical forest where are these um, creatures reside and supposedly within that forest is where that magical realm is where that other queen lived and so part of that bargain was that if she was going to um, like put her magic within this crown then nobody from that village could ever trespass within the forest or to that uh, magical city and so now it's like thousands of years later and people have kind of forgotten about that magical city they just know that the crown is what protects them and so, um, Ceres, uh, is best friends with the princess, and she, um, is, uh, has magic herself. So the royal family within this world always has magic. They, um, are able to manipulate fire. They can, um, like, create it just with, like, the snap of their fingers, and that magic comes from the crown. And typically only the royal family would have magic. But what most people don't know is that Ceres herself actually has magic as well. Her blood um, 
is from her blood things grow, so like plants grow. So she accidentally um, like cuts herself or nicks herself and blood, her blood hits the ground or a flower or a plant or whatever, it will grow and bloom. Um, and so this is a secret that she has. Nobody knows that she has this ability um, except for um, her family and her best friend and uh, who is the princess. So Cyrus's family for generations have been the royal gardeners and so they um, work and live they don't live in, in the castle, but they work very closely with the royal family. And so Ceres and the princess have grown up together. Um, I don't remember the princess's name, but um, where I am so far, the uh, king has just died and the princess is now um, about to be coronated. And so that's the day, um, kind of where I left off is her coronation day. Um, but so far, what I just read was um, talking about how Ceres's mother died. Um, and I don't want to give um, anything away, but it looks like her mother um, kind of sacrificed herself to save Ceres and the princess and the, um, well, the princess survived, but um, I'm trying to think of how I can explain it without giving it away. Well, uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that the, her mother basically sacrificed herself to save Ceres and the princess. Um, so yeah, so far it's really good. It's pretty interesting. Um, I ha it's been so long since I've read, like, a fantasy. Um, lately I've been reading a lot of contemporary. Um, so it feels good to get back into, like, a deep, like, detailed world. Um, so yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm about 80 pages into that. And then I'm reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is just kind of, uh, like, a holiday staple. Um, I don't think I need to explain that. I think everybody pretty much knows what that's about. Um, but I'm about, like, 120 pages into that. Um, and then I'm also still reading or listening to Christmas Bliss, and I'm um, probably 70% of the way through that. Um, so uh, I've said in a previous reading vlog that, or maybe, I think it was my reading vlog where I said that um, uh, Wheezy, who's the main, one of the main characters in the book, um, her fiancé is an up-and-coming up chef who has traveled to New York from Georgia to be like a guest chef at a, um, a very popular restaurant. And so some things happen that lead Wheezy to think that he may be cheating on her. And um, for a while I wasn't really sure if he really was or if she was just kind of reading too much into it um, because it kept they, she kept saying that she spoke to Daniel, her fiance, and he was sick and um, like had this terrible head cold. And part of me didn't know like, is he faking it so that he can get away with like having an affair? Um, or is he really sick? And so it ends up being that she um, leaves Georgia and flies to um, to New York City to be with him and take care of him while he's sick. And she does this a week before their wedding. So she kind of leaves the planning of their wedding um, to her best friends and takes off to New York. And some things happen and some like chaos ensues. Um, but so far it seems like he's actually not cheating on her. Um, I don't know what will happen in the end. but um, And there's the other timeline. Um, or like perspective um, of Wheezy's best friend, Bibi, who is trying to rush and get a, um, a divorce from her ex-husband who was in jail um, because he never finished the divorce process. So it turns out that she's actually still married to him. But the problem is that she's actually pregnant with somebody else's, uh, her current husband, or I guess they're not now legally married, she just found out, um, and was told that, I guess in Georgia, the law is that um, because they're legally married, she's still legally married to her ex-husband, even though that's not his child, biologically, legally, it's his child if the baby is born while they're still married, which is, like, mind-blowing, that's crazy to me. Um, so she's trying to hurry up and rush this divorce before she gives birth, otherwise he could have legal, um, like, custody of the baby, or if something were to happen to her, then he could have legal custody of the baby. So it's, there's definitely a lot going on, um, but there's a lot of um, little, um, like, nods to the holidays and Christmas time, and uh, Wheezy is in New York at Christmas time, so there's scenes of her, um, like, ice skating at Rockefeller Center and um, seeing all the different Christmas displays in the windows and all those things. So it's really, um, it's been a fun read uh, to, to kind of, um, like, listen to and kind of imagine all those different scenarios. I've always wanted to visit um, New York. I've been to New York before, but not at Christmas time, so I'd love to go at Christmas time. So, of course, my battery died, and I had to charge it before I could finish filming. Um, 
I think I left off talking about Christmas Bliss, um, which, um, like I said, I think I'm about 70 to 80% through. Um, and then I'm also doing a buddy read um, of Defy Me, which is the fifth or sixth book in the Shadow Me series, I think. Um, I had started it a few weeks ago um, and then paused um, and then now picked it back up to continue the buddy read. Um, and I should be done with it hopefully today or tomorrow. Um, I am listening to it in audiobook because that's what was available through my library. Um, this is the first book in that series that I'm listening to um, in audiobook, so it's kind of weird to hear um, like the different characters being like audibly narrated now. Um, so it's kind of have, I'm kind of having a shift, like my just my perspective, I guess, a little bit on them. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm almost done. With that one, I've loved this series. This is probably my favorite series I've read this year. Um, I, like, busted my way through the first several books. This may actually be... Let me look it up. Fifth book. Okay, so it is the fifth book. So, but... Okay, so the reason why it seems longer is because... Or, like, I'm further into the series. Is because in between almost every book is a novella. Um, focusing on a different character. So even though this is the fifth book in the series, I've, I think I've actually read like eight or nine books in the series. Because um, I think there's been about three or four novellas. So um, I, the first several books I read super quick because I just, I love them. And I got super invested in like the world and these characters. Um, and the novellas go super quick. And um, I just really um, love them. So I busted my way through and then... Um, when I got to Defy Me, I realized that the next couple books, um, there's a waitlist for the other books. I was able to get like one right after the other, right after the other, um, and I was able to uh, like extend my um, like the time that I had them borrow for. But the next two books in the series um, are on waitlist, so I haven't felt like I need to hurry up and rush through Defy Me because I know that I can't immediately pick up the next book. Um, I know that at some point I want to order these in physical, um, like the whole entire series, uh, because I've just really enjoyed them that much and they're, the covers themselves, of the book, the covers of the books themselves are gorgeous and I just would love to have copies of them. So eventually, um, that's kind of one of my things uh, for 2021 is I want to buy a physical set of all of the books in this series. Um, so yeah, I should be done with that in the next couple of days, like I said. Um, and then, I don't know what else, what I plan on reading next. Um, I may do Little Women, uh, just because, just to kind of keep going with, like, the, um, like, quintessential, like, holiday reads. Um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and Little Women are two books that I always read at this time of year. So, I think that'll probably be my next, um, one that I pick up. Right here, so. So, this is called Black Book, and it's, um. Like I said, it's, uh, I was approved for the arc through NetGalley, and I'm only like 20 pages in maybe, but so far it's really good. Uh, it's about this um, uh, Afro-Latino man living in New York, and he um, he works at Starbucks. He's worked at Starbucks for um, four years um, at Park, um, Park Avenue, and um, even though he's really good at it, the ironic thing is that he hates coffee. He doesn't like the smell of it. He doesn't like the taste of it. He doesn't even really like working at Starbucks. Um, it's just like a, mean, a means to an end. Um, and it's his way of helping his mother and in his mind kind of supporting her. And he um, like refuses to move out. He doesn't want to leave her um, because his father died several years before and he doesn't want to leave her alone. And so he's always kind of making excuses as to why he can't find a better opportunity or go to college or move away or move out of his mother's house and so one day he is serving starbucks on park avenue and this man um who he's been serving for like months um all of a sudden like offers him this opportunity i don't know what the opportunity is yet i haven't gotten to that part but um tells him like hey come up to my office like i've seen something in you i want to offer you this this chance um so i think based on the description of the book it looks like he's being going to be offered like a position with a startup company and then it's just about him like having to navigate um kind of his own fears and um like 
his own confidence within himself and his uh, relationship with his mom and having to kind of let go of that a little bit and um and it's set in new york which i love and so yeah so far it's really good um and then i will update you guys on that once i get further in but today i need to work on some um reviews for some arcs i'm super behind on reviews for net galley arcs um which i feel horrible about because i'm being approved for um, you know, these books that I'm getting for free that I'm not having to pay for, which I'm extremely, you know, uh, privileged to get and blessed to receive. And so I feel like I'm not doing my part by reviewing th these books. Um, so I have quite a few that I need to do that I want to do by the end of the year so I can kind of start fresh in 2021 and really make it um, a priority to get those reviewed and done on time. Um, so that's something I'm working on today along with catching up on YouTube, like I said. And then tonight we are having spaghetti for dinner, making spaghetti in the um, Instant Pot, which is the first time I've done it, so we'll see how it turns out. Um, and then um, I think that's it for today, but I will catch up with you guys once I have more, um, once I've read more and I have more of an update. Good morning, guys. So today is the Thursday, the 17th, I think. Yeah, the 17th. So uh, this room is quickly kind of falling apart. <laughs> I have all this stuff down here. These are some books I took out to take pictures of last night and then these are for a video that I'm doing and then all the stuff I showed yesterday. Um, I'm actually to the point where I'm gonna have to uh, rearrange my shelves again because I'm running out of space. Um, between Alcray books and um, Book of the Month and um, books that I'll probably be getting for Christmas and stuff, I'm just running out of space. So I think I, I can't decide if I want to make space um, like down here. If I just want to move my Harry Potter books over and make space there. Um, or if I want to move some of the stuff up here and make room up here. Um, I really like how my shelves are set up right now. How I have like the little pockets of like display stuff, but that's obviously gonna have to change because I'm out of room. Um, so I think I may be moving this stuff. Uh, these are like um, like children's um, like classics books, uh, and I think I'm gonna have to. I, there's actually a bookshelf in the other room where my husband works. Um, that I keep more like um like our bibles and books we've gotten from our church and stuff um so I may have to move those over there to make room so yeah I'm gonna be rearranging my shelves a little bit today so I will show you guys that and then yesterday I got a package from Ray um and I did not wait till Christmas to open it I just went ahead and opened it um <laughs> But she sent me Wicked Fox, which is awesome because we've talked about this book and we're, we were both um, really wanting to read this. And it's a lot thicker than I thought it would be. Um, so I'm definitely going to be reading that in the new year. And then this uh, is the first book in a series that I actually hadn't heard of. But um, it's one that she really likes um, and that we had talked about also. So I'm really excited. Um, going into the new year, starting a like high fantasy super thick physical book sounds perfect so I'm really excited for that and then she also sent me a album BTS album which I obviously didn't have already um so I'm really excited it's another album to add to my collection over there um so I'll be doing an unboxing of that and we'll see what's in there. I actually don't know what's in this one at all. I don't even know what the album looks like. So that'll be interesting to see. And um, I have another gift coming from Amazon today from a, um, my friend Lauren who lives in London. Um, so that's more books. I'm assuming um, she went off my Amazon wish list. So I'm assuming it's probably books um, or a book. Um, so I need to make room for that also. And then I think my husband got me a couple books for Christmas as well. So yeah, I definitely need to make room and get all this stuff figured out today. I really need to get that video filmed 
so I can get these books put away. But, um, I haven't done my hair. I haven't straightened my hair in like a week. And so I keep waiting to film until the time when my hair is actually done. But I never do it. <laughs> so, um, I may have to maybe do my hair on lunch. Maybe I'll straighten my hair on my lunch and then record the video later on this afternoon. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, yeah. Uh, I... I don't think I did any reading last night. I just kind of took the night off and just relaxed. Um, watched TV with my husband. We started watching Ink Masters on Netflix. Um, we're both really into tattoos. We both have quite a few tattoos. Um, I have seven and my husband I think has like nine or ten. Um, but he has two um, like quarter sleeves. Um, so we started watching Ink Masters from like the very beginning. Um, and we're really liking it. So... That's cool that we can watch something that we both enjoy and um, that we like, have in common and that we can, you know, talk about and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's it for now. I'm going to try to do some reading today, um, get some reviews written, and then I will check back with you guys later. and do an update. Uh, it is Tuesday the 22nd. I am about 65% of the way through Black Buck now. Um, I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about this one yet. Uh, there's some aspects of it that I really like and there are some aspects of it that I'm not really like clicking with. Um, it is meant to be satire but it's just not coming off that way. Like, it's not funny. Um, I think it's very realistic and it's very true to, like, our current times and, like, true to the current state of our country and true to what I'm sure, you know, people experience. Um, I just don't know if I would call it satire. Um, the main character, I started off really liking him in the beginning. Um, and now he has just become like this terrible person and um, you know when he Darren the main character starts off working at Starbucks um, on Park Avenue and the whole like first part of the book is um, about how badly he is treated by um, what he calls you know the rich white people who work like on the upper floors of the building yet as soon as he's given a chance um, he quickly just becomes one of those people and um, just becomes this like cliche like stereotype like crazy like Wolf of Wall Street type of person and he's just gone completely down downhill um, just his morals his character just everything has completely gone down the toilet within the span of like six months and part of me doesn't like it um, because I did really like him in the beginning but then part of me kind of understands it because he's human and things happen and you know, we do tend to, like, take on the, the personalities of the people around us. You know, you are who you surround yourself with. So I understand that part of it. Um, I just really didn't want to see him go down that road. Um, so I'm hoping that in the end it will be, like, a comeback story and he'll end up, like, redeeming himself um, because some pretty crappy stuff has happened. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but um, some pretty bad, bad things have happened and he's treated people like crap and that just wasn't who he was in the beginning it's like he's become this completely different person it's almost like a whole whole new like personality um 
and he's just acting and treating people in the exact same way that he started off like looking down on people for. Um, so yeah, uh, those that's the thing I'm not really like like just clicking with. Um, but at the same time, like I said, it, it's realistic. You know, he's human. People are flawed. I get it. Um, but like I said, I'm hoping that there's somewhat of like a happy end to it. Um, it's definitely not bad, and it, it's um, I think it definitely serves a purpose. And um, I like that it's kind of making me think outside the box and think critically and um, like making me like step into somebody else's shoes um, and like imagine how I would be if I was in that position and um, you know if I had been raised you know the way he was and you know would I have become that same type of person and so I like that part of it that it's kind of got me thinking outside the box and um, like I said, being more critical or um, thinking more critically. Um, but it is good. It's a de debut novel. It's um, own voices. Um, and yeah, so, so like I said, I'm about 65% of the way through. Uh, we'll see how it ends. I think really the ending is what will probably make it or break it for me. Um, because as it stands, he's just become like this horrible person. And there are moments where you see like the old, like Darren. Um, still in there like something happened when I was reading earlier today that um, made me like think like oh you know there is still some hope for him so hopefully that side will win out and he'll come back around um, but we'll see what happens um, so yeah I'm 65% of the way through that and then I am still reading um, Among the Beasts and Briars I haven't gotten very far into it very much further into it I'm just not it's not that I don't like it, I'm just, I don't know, it's not really holding my attention. Um, but I'm going to try to push through it. I don't want to DNF it. Um, so hopefully I'll make some headway in that today, or tonight. And then I also got some book mail today. So I received this. It is called The Genome Odyssey. And it is a non-fiction um, and it comes out in February, I believe. Yeah, February. Um, so, uh, let me get the little letter here. It says, um, it says, in the Genome Odyssey, Dr. Ashley describes how he led the team that was the first to analyze and interpret a hum complete human genome. He explains with vivid, vivid detail how they broke genome speed records to diagnose and treat a newborn baby girl whose heart stopped five times on the first day of her life, and how they found a boy with tumors growing inside his heart and traced the cause to a missing piece of his genome, among other unbelievable patient stories. So this is a medical detective nonfiction, it says. Um, so I don't think I've ever read anything like this before. Um, this is from Celadon Books. Um, it was unsolicited, but I'm actually kind of intrigued, and I was literally just saying earlier that I wanted to read more nonfiction in the new year. So, I'm glad that I re received that, actually, because then I can add it um, to my TBR. One of my goals for 2021 is to read one nonfiction a month, so that fits perfectly. Um, and then also one thing I do, or another thing I do like about Black Buck is that I wanted to um, read more, like, own voices in 2021 also. So I'm already making some headway on that. Um, and I also started... Well, another goal for 2021 was to read more, like, graphic novels and uh, manga. So, I started reading Tokyo Ghoul. Um, I've tried reading, like, graphic novels and those types of, um, like, books before. They just never, like, kept my attention or, like, intrigued me. But I started reading Tokyo Ghoul tonight, today, and I'm, like, blowing through it. I'm already, like, 70% through. And I'm actually really liking it. So, I know that there's quite a few, like, volumes of it, I think. I actually just saw it at Barnes & Noble. Last weekend, I went to Barnes and Noble to get a um, gift card for my sister-in-law for Christmas. And when I was, like, browsing around, I saw all of the Tokyo Ghoul um, books. And those books are, like, gorgeous. The covers are awesome. Um, so it's funny that I saw those in it. And then now I um, saw that it was available in the library. So I decided to rent it um, or to borrow it. Um, but, yeah, I started that. Like I said, I'm already, like, 70% of the way through. So I'm actually really liking it. So hopefully I'll be able to continue on with that. 
Um, and what else? Um, I thought that my owl print was going to be here today. It was supposed to be. We have a thing where like every day we get an email um, from the uh, unit, like the postal service that tells us like what's coming in our mailbox for the day. And it said that my owl print box was supposed to be here today, but it wasn't in our mailbox. So sometimes it happens. Sometimes like the, um, the mail carrier will like leave our like mail in our mailbox, the envelopes, but not leave like packages. And then they'll end up delivering the packages like the next day. So hopefully it'll be here tomorrow so I can do my unboxing for that. And then I have some other unbo um, unboxings I want to do. And um, yeah, I think that is it for now. I'm trying to finish Black Book at least before I finish up this vlog because it is starting to get long. Um, and then I'll start a new reading vlog after that. But yeah, I'm going to leave you guys here for now. I will check in next time I have an update. Hey guys, so I wanted to come on and do um, a little summary of the week and then just kind of close out this vlog and I'll just pick it up back up for next week. Um, so I am still reading Among the Beasts and Briars. Uh, I read a little bit more last night, so I'm about 40% of the way through. Um, and I will, um, I'll do like a check-in of that on the next vlog. Um, and I have, I'm about 90% of the way through uh, black box so I should hopefully be finishing that tonight and then last night I read volume one of Tokyo Ghoul which I've been wanting to read more um, like graphic novels and uh, manga like I said yesterday um, so I actually really like that and I immediately went and borrowed volume two three and four from my library so I'm gonna get through those as quickly as I can because um, like I said I'm really liking it I read more this morning um, so you'll see more of that in next week's vlog um, and what else um i finished christmas bliss um that ended up being a three star um i didn't love the way it ended it all just kind of wrapped up too easily um and i think that's just the nature of that kind of book you know like a, a kind of a cliche like christmasy book um they all tend to have that um like like super like convenient easy resolutions um so that's kind of how it ended up being um so that was, it was good for the season, um, but it definitely wasn't like the best book I've ever read. Um, and what else? I'm still, I need to finish Defy Me. I think I have like two more chapters. So I'm probably going to try to finish that tonight as well. And then I'm still waiting on the next two books to come into the library. So next week uh, is the last week of December. So I don't know if I'll try anything or I'll start anything new. I have a couple of arcs that I need to read before like mid-January so I may just start those and I'll probably just read more of Tokyo Ghoul so I'll um, check in with you guys about those in next week's vlog. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and I will see you guys next week.